Welcome to the Ranking Revolution podcast, your go-to source for strategies and ideas for SEO, organic growth, content creation, and online business. I'm Doug Cunnington. I'm your host. Today, we're going to talk with Alex Capizola. Like normal, this is going to be divided into two parts. I'm testing this out to have just sort of shorter episodes with two separate topic areas with part one and part two. Alex is a real estate investor, but he got into SEO. So the first part, we'll talk about his start with SEO, which was only in 2020, and some of the things he's learned about real estate SEO. And then for part two, we're going to talk about AI and how he uses AI to be effective in the real estate SEO area. I think this is a great industry to get into. I know a lot of folks that are into real estate. I'm not personally a real estate investor, but a lot of my friends are, whether it's uh, rental properties or being real estate agents or brokers of some kind, or just general investors in commercial real estate. There's a lot of money out there. And that's one of the benefits. When you know SEO, you can go to the industries that have a lot of revenue floating around, a lot of money and a lot of marketing spend. And real estate is one of those versus, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend people do SEO where the potential customers are broke college students or frugal people. They just don't have very much money to spend. But folks in real estate, they typically have a pretty large budget. Anyway, This is part one. I'll link up and stuff so you can check out some stuff from Alex. And if you dig the conversation and you want to hear how Alex uses AI, be sure to check out part two as well. So let's get to the interview now. Today, I'm chatting with Alex Capizzolo. He's a real estate investor, a house flipper, a realtor, and an SEO nerd that has founded two real estate companies with his childhood best best friend. Let's try that again. Alex Capizzolo is a real estate investor, a house flipper, a realtor, and an SEO nerd who has co-founded two real estate companies with his childhood best friend, which is pretty cool. You get to work with your best bud. He owns and manages one real estate website for each company, one in Philadelphia and one in San Diego. Since 2021, the websites have generated over a thousand SEO leads. And that means people search for something, they ended up on his website, he and his partner have been able to generate 900,000. Oh, this is a big number. Let me read this exactly because we have it down to the dollar. So $942,822 in revenue. And for fun, Alex loves to surf, hike, and travel. So Alex, welcome to the show today. How's it going? Thanks for having me on, Doug. Appreciate it. And uh, going good. Happy to be here. Awesome. We're going to get into some of the nitty gritty, but I'm curious, how did you get started with SEO in the beginning? Circa 2020, COVID hit, sitting around my house. Um, And this was a time when I was running my real estate business part-time with my business partner now. He was also kind of part-time. We had one foot in, one foot out, also doing other things that just paid our bills at the time. And I got furloughed for my W-2 job. I was like, hey, let's go full-time into this real estate thing. How can we make this better, grow it in a way that kind of aligns with us and our style? Wasn't really looking for the big real estate team or anything like that with a bunch of cold callers and stuff, which we had done in the past. Um, heard someone else on a podcast from our market in Philadelphia, and we recognized the name instantly. It's one of the, was one of the top, top guys at the time. And we knew that he got all of his leads and did a lot of business from online. Didn't really know at the, at the time, we didn't really know the difference between PPC, SEO, and you know, everything else under the, underneath the umbrella. But um, that's what got us interested in SEO. And then just spent a couple of months teaching myself podcasts, networking with people, joined a mastermind, um, and kind of just figured some stuff out with a lot of trial and error. And um, we finally started getting some traffic to our business, to our website. We stopped all other marketing and just went full on with SEO. And it's been that way since the past four years now. And just to be clear, you really didn't have a background in SEO beforehand. No background. 
that's awesome because people that maybe they have studied and been obsessed and they've researched for years and years and years, but they haven't been able to produce. But in your case, you had a, a business already running and you had a very clear value proposition where you, if you got people in the door, if they were the right leads, you knew you were going to be able to convert them into your business and, and make a profit and pull in revenue like right away. And one of the notes that we have here to talk about is how SEO is a little bit harder or it feels harder at least than it used to in the past. And the thing is the, the context that you're looking at is only about four years. But if you think back like 10 or 15 years, it's dramatically different. It is so different than it was. But it's really cool that you were able to to jump in, apply SEO to your business directly and get like a huge amount of value. Of course, your time is valuable, but the ROI must be absolutely amazing. So let's let's dive into a few of the details here with realtors and real estate in general. It doesn't seem like very many of them are using SEO or at least visibly it doesn't feel like it. It feels like there's more folks on maybe social. And I have a lot of friends that are into real estate and they have a lot of rental properties and they're they're always it's a lifestyle for them, right? They're super into real estate, but it doesn't feel like many of them are doing SEO. Is that your take as well? Is it kind of on the on the earlier side for real estate agents and realtors on SEO? Yeah, it's interesting. In real estate, Google has kind of carp categorize different sub niches of real estate. So you have the real estate agents. And for a lot of those keywords, the top three, it's Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor.com. <clears throat> Truly a dot com. Ones that like you're probably not going to outrank. So I think off the bat, like if someone that's a realtor is coming in with some SEO knowledge or maybe getting some advice, they might they could be deterred from that and just Okay, Zillow's DR90, you know, Megasite, Homelight, if that sounds familiar to people, Open Door, you know, there's a lot of them out there. So for real estate agents, I, th I think it's a little tougher. We do a little bit of everything. So we, we capitalize on stuff like um, properties that could be good for a rental, properties that could be good for a house flip. Um, and I think that's helped us at least cast a wider net, more keywords. Yeah, Redfin and Zillow aren't showing up for us. So it's a little, it was a little easier. We, were, we just had to outrank the other house flippers in the area to, to kind of capture that market share. But um, yeah, it's a long game. SEO, if anyone knows in like a competitive industry or niche. So that kind of deters people. And then, um, yeah, I mean, realtors, especially when they get started, um, there's some stats out there, but it's like how it's kind of like startups, right? Like 80% of them don't make it after year like three or something crazy. And um, SEO doesn't happen overnight. And realtors are often they're looking for something really cheap for marketing, like door knocking or driving for dollar, like, you know, something lower on the expense scale. So I think that's also probably a reason why. Um, yeah, probably those the, the realtors that I've seen in the industry get involved the most are ones that already have an established business, they have a budget. They hire a company because they don't want to learn or, you know, they just don't have the time to learn SEO. Um, and those are the ones that I've seen get into it and they, they have the time, they have the budget. And um, they're just looking for one more different marketing channel to add on. A lot of the audience is familiar with some of the basics of SEO, but let's talk about what you did, especially starting off new, knowing that you didn't want to waste any of your time. So let's start at the beginning. How did you form your plan and implement it? And it sounds like you did most of the work yourself, or at least if you outsourced, it was kind of minor pieces. But how did you develop the plan and then implement it? Yeah. So this was the time when, again, I got furloughed from my W-2 and our real estate business, which I was jumping into full time, wasn't crushing it. Um, we would make like eight or nine grand a month, but we'd spend literally like six or seven on cold calling because that's how we were generating leads. So it was like this vicious cycle of us hustling and not making money. So when we looked at SEO, we also didn't want to spend tons of money starting out. Uh, worked out though. I was all, it was COVID. So I was chilling at home. And then I was also not in Philly. I lived in California and still do. Um, so that almost forced me to just do SEO. What else am I? Let's try and figure this out. So, um, yeah, I mean, a couple things almost bootstrapping that if, if someone were to get started or how I got my start that could help people, um, joined a mastermind 
right off the bat. Now, I mean, the guy found me, but he he saw me posting in um, this real estate forum, and it was for sure just for backlinks. Like it was one of those forums where you get your links in the bottom of your footer of your signature if you post. Um, and we saw the same people posting and then all kind of like came together. So, but I mean, you can find masterminds too, that can be helpful. So that was super, um, super influential getting started and did that in the first couple months. And then, um, we, we knew we needed content. This was before AI writers or at least before they were good. Um, and we didn't have the budget to like outsource a lot of it. So I was writing some and I also wasn't that good at writing at the time. So we're like, let's get some help. So we put it out on Upwork uh, for a writer, um, but it would be not for money. It would be in exchange for like us teaching them about real estate. And we found someone who was actually like, you know, super lucky. It was a great fit. And she wrote like probably five different full length guides. Like one was on Philadelphia eviction process. One was on the squatter laws there. One was on uh, like closing costs in Philadelphia, 3,000 word, mega page, ultra guides, lots of links, you know, like five internal links, 10 outbound links, like super robust beefy. And uh, those still, like we have to update them for the laws and stuff. But she wrote those in 2020. We built only a few links to them and they still, um, they still rank maybe number one or like top three today for those keywords. And that without us realizing it, we didn't, I didn't even know what topical authority was at the time, but I was, we should cover these things because it makes sense. And sometimes we even do get leads from them too. Someone who has a squatter in their rental property and Philly's like crazy with squatters and the laws there. Um, so sometimes people just throw up the white flag and want to sell it with them in there. Um, so we get some leads from that too, along with just the good traffic, the local IP addresses and, and all that stuff. Right on. Let's go deeper into keywords. And it sounds like for people that are looking for this sort of real estate play, a lot of it is local based. Is that a fair assumption? And you could take advantage of that by just being the best article that's the most accurate for that locality? Definitely. Yep. Yep. Um, and Google's shifted. They, they like switch it up every couple of months, it seems, for local stuff like for example if you type in sell my house without a location without a city in a particular city on occasion google switches it up and they put national companies there they'll put like open door and things like that which they're like a national home buyer but most of the time more commonly it's it's local businesses and those google does show a little preference to from what we've seen in terms of sniping those keywords and, and ranking to them okay let's go into Link building, another big area for SEOs in general. What tips do you have for people after going through, you know, you mentioned the forums a minute ago, so kind of low hanging fruit, and then you were able to, you know, actually find other people doing the same thing, which is kind of funny. But yeah, what other link building tips do you have? It's, I mean, from 2020 to today, it's very different. So right, 10 years ago to today, it's super different. Um, but recently, I'd say the past like year, what's helped us still get good links that are relevant. Um, we're a little more strict on our quality because we feel like Google has been more strict on their quality. So we kind of had to keep up with that. So, you know, our vetting process for a link is more strict than it was four years ago, for sure. Things like spam score, organic traffic, um, what, what that website ranks for. I'm, I'm, I even get sketched out if I see a website that's, you know, a tons of traffic six months ago and then it's like way down. Um, that's like a factor too, you know? So this is all the things. So I'd say stricter um, stricter criteria for which links we're open to. And then networking has just been huge. So, and that kind of compounds over time, right? It's just networking with other link builders. Um, make a page on your website for guest posting and include all those keywords, like right for us, right for us real estate, all that stuff. But your contact info, you're gonna get blown up every day. 80% of them are going to be, you know, instant trash emails, but um, there's some gold in there too. And people will find you that are legit link builders. And when you respond to them, you say, hey, um, you can guest post on my site or get a link insertion, but there's, you know, there's no charge. And uh, to make this happen, I would like something in return. What websites are you working with that um, you can get me a link on to make this a trade? And people are usually decently receptive if they're legit. 
Um, it's also helpful. And again, this is what we learned over the course of the past couple of years. When you have two sites, that's helpful too. You leverage one for the other. So you avoid, if you're doing a link trade, you can avoid A to A overlaps of, of link trades. Um, and that's helpful because some people won't do trades with you unless you have multiple sites and can do the A to B to C kind of setup. Um, and then just fostering those, those relationships and SEO too. Like if you've been in it for a while, like the link, link building, especially like people are shysty. I feel like there's a lot of those out there and like, it's not really a sub niche within an industry that's known for like giving first. So it sounds cheesy, but like try and just add a little more value than the next person, write an email and don't sound like, you know, be, be nice, be courteous and try and help them out. And, you know, go, go a little extra mile if you think it will help. And, um, that can lead to some pretty solid relationships. What metrics are you looking for and other criteria for the quality to make sure you're not just on a link farm or something like that, a content mill? Uh, spam score, um, which I feel like sometimes like recently Google doesn't care as much. I don't know. I've heard mixed things from people on SEO, spam score. It's like they care and they don't. So but that's still something we look at. Um, we look at outbound links. So if we think it's a guest post farm, they're, they're getting better at disguising those with nicer looking, more normal mom and pop websites. So we'll look, we'll punch it into Ahrefs, look at the outbound links that are coming from it and type in things like casino, CBD, VPN, porn, things like that. And if those come up, then, um, that's, yeah, that's a red flag that it could just be a guest post farm. So those are like good tall tale signs. And, um, yeah, I'd say those two have been helpful lately. Do you look at the ratio of inbound links to outbound links or anything like that? Uh, we, we don't usually go that deep. No. Have you, have you seen that or have you done that? And has that been helpful for you? I've heard, I'm, I've heard that could be good. Just so you know, you know, check for the things that you mentioned and the specific outbound links, but then also just making sure they're not publishing like five articles a day with several outbound links. A listener once emailed me and he was like, yeah, you know, they, they look like they're good links. And he sent me five that he purchased from some company. And I looked at the articles and they were legit-ish sites that got traffic, but they were content mills. And I was like, they sold the same four people links in every one of those posts. Like it was so, like I saw that, like, and I just clicked through and looked. So a couple little things like that, you know, the spam score, all the things add up and it, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of false positives, but if you find all positive signs, then it's probably bad. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. No, those are, those are great points. And right. And there's that, there's a, uh, some weight that's carried with your gut feeling too, when you see those pop up. Anything else with the, uh, link building aspect, is there anything that you brought to the table from your realtor experience and just working in real estate that helped you, gave you like an unfair advantage with SEO? I want to say, I can't think of anything. Um, I mean, I'd, besides just being very used to emailing, coming from a corporate background before I was full, full time in real estate, um, did lots of emailing and lots of email outreach. So I'd say that's probably the skill that translated to just talking to link builders learning the lingo and, um, trying to make, make deals happen, even if it's just like a little link trade. Um, one other little tip that we've done this year only, uh, or last year only that's helped for link building was, um, so I'm sure your listeners know Harrow, help a reporter out. If you're doing lots of that, um, and you're getting lots of those, then we will look at whichever articles we were included in and then see who else was included. And usually it's, you know, sometimes it's the list of the top 20 realtors who said X about Y in the Z city. Um, so those are like huge low hanging fruits to you. You reverse search those websites, find their people's emails, say, hey, we're included in the same Harrow link. Would love to do some trades with you too. That's a brilliant one because you know that they understand the value in it and they also put in a similar amount of time and effort as you did. So it's like, you know, you're dealing with people that like are not going to fuck you over and they'll probably be able to hook you up with some pretty good contacts, good network to be part of. Very cool. One 
thing to circle back on. You said you were in a mastermind. Was this uh, just a a group mastermind versus like a paid mastermind where someone where someone else is facilitating? Just to clarify the the meaning of mastermind. For this group, it was just a group of people in similar phases of their SEO journey. Um, one guy organized it, but it wasn't paid and wasn't. It was like a one and done kind of get together. Perfect. Okay. Cool. And I started in a mastermind when I first started working online too. And yeah, super cool. Like people learn a ton. I think we met regularly for about six weeks or so, and then it ran its course. But really, I mean, it helped me out a ton. I was like the organizer, but I was also like the least experienced person in there. So I learned a lot, but I pulled everything together. And then, you know, the the group disbanded basically. But highly recommend a mastermind group. The accountability is great. You have great contacts. And anything anything else you want to add, Alex, about mastermind groups? Google is so dynamic and confusing alone. So it will drive you crazy if you're trying to measure your own site with only one site and only a couple data points. Talk to some other people who are doing similar stuff and share, get their data. And um, you can learn a lot and, uh, you know, kind of shortcut a lot of stuff. That wraps up part one with Alex. So if you want to see where the conversation is going, be sure to check out part two, where we talk about how he uses AI tools and the like. And if you have a second, really appreciate it. If you leave a review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, be sure you're subscribed wherever you're listening. It does help out the show. If you happen to be a YouTube fan, leave a comment, like all the videos, share it with your friends, all that kind of thing. It really does help out and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks.